All right, Craig Dosti here with Dosti's View. We're not in the Bat Cave today. We're with the Batmobile. Um, and I wanted to talk about something that a lot of us have to reluctantly embrace, um, and that is the concept of ski leashes. I know, look, we all want brakes. <clears throat> and brakes for telemark bindings basically are not that awesome. They fulfill the purpose of a brake in that if you eject, and as we know, um, release with telemark bindings is not something you can guarantee. In fact, you should count on your binding not releasing, but in case it does, and especially with those that are supposed to release, you definitely wanna have ski brakes or something that when your ski comes off will prevent the ski from heading downhill, okay? Um, but the problem with telebrakes is they can retract up, but they can't come in as well. And so they're always hanging off the side and it's very easy to hook um, your opposing ski on them and then you're gonna fall and wish you released when maybe you can't. <laughs> or um, they, they just get in the way in a lot of things. Like the Mejo, I was really excited about having brakes, but I gave up on the brakes because I tour a lot and when I tour, they squeak. And part of the reason I like the backcountry is the solitude and the quiet. But when you're the guy going up the skin track, it's very embarrassing. So I had to get rid of them, okay? And Outlaw, they're nice, but again, they just pull up, they don't retract. Um, same with Rodefella Free Rod. So what are we left with? A ski leash, which means if you fall and do come out of your binding, your ski will not head down the hill. However, the ski is going to stay with you, and if you're doing a rag doll, you may have the ski beating you over the head. So that's the negative side of ski leashes. But the beautiful side of ski leashes is um, it's a safety net for not losing your ski. And I find that is most valuable um, when I'm standing at the top of a steep couloir and I'm stepping into the binding and I don't have brakes and I don't want to, like, accidentally kick the ski down the couloir. So... Um, so leashes, you can clip in first and then get into the binding if it's a well-designed leash. And there's been all kinds through the years. Um, my, my current favorite, and this may change soon, but you never know, okay, is this plume leash that wraps around the leg. The reason I like it, and I'll show you later, is because, yeah, you have to bend over to pick it up, but you don't have to stay bent over to clip it on. You can kind of relax and you can attach it up here below the knee and well above the ankle. All these others are, are leashes that clip down on your boot down by the toe. Okay, so, mm, um, but they're a lot better than they used to be. Like, here's the one that Valet made that I, I used to love this thing, but uh, these tabs that allowed you to pull it off or put it on um, would fall off far too prematurely. And then this clip zone here, because it's just aluminum, would get crushed. No good. Then there was these. These uh, open up like this. All right, my problem with them is a lot of times when I open them up, they spin on me, and then I, I'm, all, I'm just fiddling with them. I hate that. Then Black Diamond, basically, you know, they're a climbing company. They came up, and, and they got into the ski world, and they still are there. They basically adapted the carabiner concept with a hot wire carabiner, which is a spring steel uh, clip here. And it just, you know, clips on very easy to your toe. I'll demonstrate that later. And it comes off easy. These are really nice, but it's short. It's a short leash, and you gotta bend over and stay bent over. And a lot of people have built on that concept. Uh, this is a G3. Now, here's what they did nice about this. It stretches. So um, it's easier to grab. You still gotta bend over to clip it to your toe, but not bad, not bad. And the same thing here, all right? This is a Dinafit. It's basically a carabiner on um, some uh, coiled 
uh, braided cable, all right? Fairly small gauge. Now, one thing you don't want to forget, if you're doing these, you want to get a small little loop of braided cable. Um, they come, you, you want it fairly small gauge, even smaller gauge than probably the gauge that is on your um, leash, okay? Uh, and this, you put on your binding with a girth hitch. And uh, here's an example of a girth hitch on that wire, that, that loop to which I then attach the safety strap, okay? So hopefully you can see how that is done. These make them all easier to put on. A lot of them have a loop at the end of their leash and you girth hitch that on. But sometimes it's nice to have these separate because you you can buy these weaker so this becomes if you will kind of like um, a safety release if you're caught in an avalanche and the leash won't let go of your boot but this will break under the pressure of the avalanche good luck with that so um what i wanted to do next was demonstrate oh oh there's one other one here this is brand new for me Okay, I had a hard time figuring this one out. This is Bluebird Day. I'm like going, how do you pull it? It doesn't pull. You push it open. All right. So I know that's easy to put on. I've never used it yet, so I'm not sure how easy it is to take off. We'll see. Okay, so that's a quick look at... Um Ski leashes, um, thank you, I forget your name, who requested that we focus on that, but that was a really good idea because it's one of those things that we take for granted that um, we might need, and you tend to use it more in the backcountry, even though it isn't the safest. I mean, it's not always about safety in the backcountry. It's about freeing your mind, it's getting out there, and you have a free heel, and you can, any time you want, you can, you can drop a telly turn, and that's the beauty. You can, they can't, right? And we all know, I mean, look at that's the sexiest turn there is out there, all right? Um, so uh, I hope you are getting out there. And when you are, spread telemark. See you next time. Adios.